if we're ready to start the event, then we should start with um, Elder Gloria's prayer. Teresa, we can start with Gloria and then we'll go into, I, I know I'm starting with the program uh, with Gloria's blessing and then we'll do the ground rules mm -hmm. and then we'll do the, wel the introductions and the welcome. Okay. Okay, great. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Gloria? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you um, ready to I'm ready. do your prayer? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gloria Arianas. I am a Tongva elder. And we usually start all events with a blessing. It's not to um, force the way I pray or the way I believe on anybody. These are just words uh, for goodness. And we certainly need goodness right now, okay? And I want everybody to take deep breaths and relax and uh, enjoy um, beautiful words that come from the heart. Uh, so with that, I will start. Um, grandfather, grandmother, spirits of the four directions, ancestors of the land. I humbly come before you and ask for blessings for our lands, for our people, for all the four-leggeds the winged ones, the swimmers, those that crawl upon Mother Earth, and the little creepy crawlers. You put them all here for reasons, and everything is being threatened at this time. We ask for blessings for Mother Earth that she is healing. She is going through a restoration at this time, regenerating her energies that have been killed with toxins and oil and water being uh, poisoned. And many people are suffering, including the animal land. Um, we ask for blessings for our, our plant people. Uh, a lot of people are starting to do their gardens, and we ask that their gardens are blessed and that they have a good abundance amount of food and share that food with those who don't have. Creator asks for blessings for the homeless and the houseless people. Um, people are, they're trying to help them. It's hard, and I just ask for blessings for these people that they get off the streets, that they go into safe places. Creator, I ask for blessings for all the children, the women who are missing, murdered, indigenous women. Uh, they go missing, and we're just barely starting to pay attention that there is a problem with that. And it is, Creator, I'm asking for blessings for that. Creator, I ask for blessings for whatever is hurting us at this time, this virus, Creator. Many people are housed in their homes and uh, are not being able to go out. And uh, it's nice but after a while it is hard creator so i'm asking those people who want to take the chance and go out in public to please consider what you may or may not get creator ask them to, i ask that you please guide them to think of their parents their grandparents their aunties and their uncles and so i ask for that in a very humble way and i sorry to ask for so much but uh these, we are in very different times, Creator, and I'm asking for those blessings. I'm asking for every person who wrote poems today to uh, thank you for, give thanks that you shared your words, because it's very comforting to read these beautiful words. Creator, I'm also thankful for all the people who are responsible for today's event and ask for blessings for all of them. Safe journey to all of you. Aho. Neshu Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gloria. That was beautiful. Um, we're going to move around in the program a little bit because nothing um, doesn't change, you know, and as we move forward, we may have to switch things around a bit. There are, um, let me see, about seven sections to this program we've divided up. So in the first session, we will have, um, thank you to uh, Rick uh, Wilson, I believe his last name is, who will be sharing a flute uh, presentation with us. We will have uh, Nikki Winslow, who is the, um, the director of the Altadena Library, who will talk about the Altadena Poets Laureate and tell us a brief history. And then we'll have Clara Newman speak about, speak for the Friends of the Altadena Library and how the, the friends of the library have supported um, this endeavor. So we'll start off with Rick's
flute selection. Hello, this is Rick. I'm improvising on a shakuhachi, a Japanese traditional flute. I'll go in a minute. Thank you, Rick. That was beautiful. It helps to center us. And I'm hoping that everybody will continue to just breathe during this celebration um, because breath is life um, and it energizes us. Next, we have Nikki Winslow, the library director who will give us a brief history of our Poet Laureate ship. All right, hello everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us for the first virtual Poetry and Cookies event. Before we get started, I wanted to thank and honor the many poets who have been part of promoting poetry at our libraries and would love to share a brief history of how this event came to be. A big thank you to Polly Dutton for filling me in and having the vision to form this effort over 15 years ago. In 2003, Polly was working the reference desk here at the Altadena Library when local poet Ralph Lane approached and asked if the library ever hosted poetry readings. In just moments after their conversation, two other local poets walked into the library, which Polly took as a sign that poetry needed to find its place here. The first gathering, called Cookies and Poetry, at the time, hosted just 12 poets, and guests read the poems on photocopied handouts while enjoying a spread of luscious cookies. In 2004, the event grew to feature 15 poets. The first compilation of poems was printed and cataloged, and Ralph Lane was chosen as the first official Altadena Poet Laureate. Over the past 15 years, a dedicated group of local poets and poets laureate including Marsha Thompson, Aline Terzian, Linda Dove, Thelma Reyna, Aline Lipkin, and now our current Poets Laureate, Hazel Clayton Harrison and Teresa Mai Shook, have carried this wonderful tradition forward. Thanks to their hard work, our community has enjoyed countless poetry workshops, annual poetry and cookies gatherings, and the annual publication of the beautifully designed Altadena Poetry Review now called the Altadena Literary Review, that has grown to include upwards of 120 poets and writers. A more detailed history of poetry at the Altadena Libraries can be found at www.altadenalibrary.org poetry, as well as more images of the early publications and gatherings. I hope you all enjoy today's ceremony and support our friends of the Altadena Library who ensure that funds are provided to continue this meaningful tradition. Thank you.
Thank you, Nikki. That was wonderful. I think we all have little bits and pieces of that history, but it's nice to hear it from Polly in your point of view. So thank you so much. Next, we have Claire Newman, who will talk a bit about how the Friends of the Altadena Library supports our Poet Laureateship. And from my experience, we couldn't do, do it without them. So, Claire? Thank you so much for that, Hazel. So the Friends of the Altadena Library um, are always delighted to support the Poets Laureate, the publication of the Altadena Literary Review and the Poetry and Cookies events. We're so pleased that this year's big event has been able to go ahead virtually and we thank Hazel and Teresa for all their incredible work in putting together not only this year's review in both hard copy and ebook form, but also for enabling so many of this year's contributors to perform their work either today or on the library's YouTube channel. Uh, the friends would also like to thank Nikki, Chloe, and everyone at the library for everything they're doing for the Altadena community at the present time and for all the hard work that has enabled poetry and cookies to go ahead in this format. So the Friends will add to the growing list of virtual programming put on by the library when we hold our annual meeting on June 1st, at which our speakers will discuss the current educational system uh, and situation. Uh, some of you may have attended or participated in our popular book pitch party last November, and we hope that many of you will attend our second virtual event over the summer. But now it's time to sit back and enjoy some wonderful poetry so I'm going to hand you uh, back to your Poets Laureate uh, to introduce the uh, this first set of readings. Thank you, Claire. So as you said, now is the time to sit back, relax and enjoy the readings. And we have our uh, Poet Laureate, co-Poet Laureate, Teresa Maychuk, who will introduce each poet before they read. Teresa? Thank you, Hazel. First poet is Jessica Abugatas, and she'll be reading secondhand. And congratulations. Thanks, Teresa. It's so nice to see you all in your cool glasses and your hats. Uh, <laughs> this is secondhand. I know it's mine, and I'm here to take it back. Alma 80 makes me a deal. The vintage mink, silk gown, cherry printed handkerchiefs. She names her price, unfurls the frock, says, I'm the only slip of a girl to pass through town, the thing actually fits. It's a finger on the trigger place, midway up the western coast, where a trucker tries his hand at dainty waitresses, or a choir girl with a fair faucet waist, the apple of her mother's black eye. In a Victorian mansion converted to an antique shop, a Victrola turns like a lover's worry. The owner's daughters follow me around. Porcelain dolls, age five and seven, they know where the prettiest dresses hang. I wear my winnings, trying on another life in a bathroom with a dusty tub and a door that won't shut, skipping back in the dark to the man asleep in my motel room, his beautiful drooling face, his body an orchard, heavy on the bed with plum love. I want to say, I bet so many girls have loved you. Have you grown tired of admiration? Have you dreamed of dying some Chris McCandless death in the lonesome landscape of the mine? I dance around in a thrift store dress, basking in my accidental inheritance. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jessica. Next is Viviana Aparicio Chamberlain, and she'll be reading Mexican of America. Viviana, are you there? Viviana, I'm not sure if Vibi is experiencing technical difficulties. So I'll move on to the next poet. Gloria Arilanes. Can you hear me? Yes, and Gloria Arilanis will be reading her poem, What I Know. Thank you. 
Thank you, Teresa. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I can't um, see you though, Gloria. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm not very technical. <laughs> what I know, I know this much that you know and understand what is sacred and should not be disturbed because you say you cannot move the titanic. Don't disturb those that are in their watery grave. Don't disturb the graves. I also know this much that you know and understand what hallowed ground is because you say where the Twin Towers once stood is hallowed ground and must be respected. Don't build or develop on that ground. Why is it you lack understanding, compassion, and respect for our ancestral burial grounds being decimated, desecrated in the name of home building? As the developer proclaim, proclaims, I have all the correct paperwork, blueprints, and permissions. Get the hell out of our way. We have a time schedule. Keep the back hose digging. These are not human remains. Those damn troublemakers. I am losing money the politicians agree and i guess i don't get to finish you should finish yeah you okay. can finish definitely okay, finish. um the politicians agree they try to cover up drop my paper I apologize for that. Okay, then a halt. And the salivating anthropologists are sent in with their students to remove what was sent into the spirit world in ceremony with burial items for their next journey. So very sacred. We must study these items, categorize, catalog, define, store them in boxes, put them in in dark warehouse, dusky warehouses. The academic world must study. Perhaps we will let them bury them someday. Those who will not give up remain in prayer vigil for the ancestors. I know you understand this. Don't disturb the burials, leave them undisturbed. Thank you. You must understand this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Viviana, are you, do you hear me? Hello? Okay, um, until Vivi resolves the technical issues, I'll keep moving on. Um, Beth Bard, She'll be reading Planting Seeds in Hope of Planting Herself. Hi. Um, this, was, this poem was written for my daughter, Kari Davis. Planting Seeds in Hope of Planting Herself. Every fruit is an experiment to her. Will it grow if she soaks the seeds? Jars adorn the windowsills with avocado and mango seeds, lovingly pierced with toothpicks, sitting in embryonic water, awaiting a shoot, a root to plant. Transplanting herself to Los Angeles, fearing nothing will grow for her here. The soil is tired, arid climate produces a 10% chance of rain, of new friends, the odds not in her favor, she brings seedlings home, plants them lovingly in bigger pots. Time and rain will prove her success or not. Wait, spying yellow flowers on tomato plants. Hope springs from the stem, from her efforts, from her care, from her love. Thank you. Thank you. Next poet, um, is Judy Barrett here? No, okay, um, next poet. She is here, is, she is here. Oh, you are here, okay, great. So Judy Barrett will be reading The Cloud Rider. 
the cloud rider. On a wisp of cloud, he rides in white top hat and tails, small in stature, straight and proud, an ebony baton in hand. With arms outstretched, he silently calls to the heavens, and at once the winds come from every direction. Solid and strong, he stands ready to begin. He waves his black baton in a flourish of infinity, and so conjoins and commingles the winds, the north with the south, east and west, strong and weak. In that moment of shift, there comes a harmonious hum, as with hands and heart, the cloud rider conducts the winds in a sweet, seductive symphony, and together they sing joyfully to the earth. When the people of earth hear, they abandon their greed, their hate and fear, as the mighty winds sing gloriously united as one. Satisfied, the cloud rider lowers his black baton, bows his head, and is once more a smiling, senile old man in a wheelchair. Thank you. Is Lynn Bronstein? Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. Great. Okay, so Lynn Bronstein will be reading Semper Virens. Semper Virens. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. By Semper Virens. A woman is always considered an unfinished work. A man often reaches his full height and never reach it again. The woman trees keep growing and the man trees wither. Where is the tree that will entwine its branches to that of another tree, its rightful mate? If we go on growing and they don't, we are left alone. Men, spread out your arms. Let the leaves grow. Let the branches harden. Let the work go on and the work be in progress. For how else can we really the world. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is Peggy Castro here? Chuka Susan Chesney? Jackie Chow? Is, wait, was Peggy Castro here? I think she was muted. Oh, oh muted? how do I unmute? You're not muted any. I unmuted you. Okay, so okay. Castro will be reading Mountain Lilac. Okay, well, hello everyone. Um, I'm reading from Tacoma in Washington. Mountain Lilac, you take me back to a hike I made surrounded by women, but mostly alone. We walk through the fog covered chaparral, not desperate stars burning through a soulless night, terrifying and illuminating imploding into black holes or crashing through emptiness. Just myself and a dozen women walking silently through the fog, surrounded by purple and white blossoms of mountain lilac and an aching emptiness for what we left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Also, it looks like Jackie Chow is here. Um, Jackie Chow is reading Why I Write. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, can hear you. I'm here. Thank you, Teresa. My poem is called Why I Write. I write miles and miles of magnetic words draw your world to mine in our shared galaxy. Words that can halt time capture your face preserved in notebooks no matter where you are your face absent from photographs the wrinkles you hid now etched onto the page in the shapes of words thank you thank you vib can you hear me vib vibby Viviana, um, okay, I'm going to keep going on um, until Vib. When when you're when you're on, please let us know. Thank you. Um, next is Reg Clarkinia. 
who will be reading Long Shadows Drape Over Things Endlessly. Thanks, Teresa. And thank you, Hazel, too. And I loved that beautiful poem at the beginning, or I mean the beautiful op opening prayer at the beginning to Gloria. Um, here's my poem. Long shadows drape over living things effortlessly. The air gets crisp with melted grass on quiet, hot days in Southern California. The sidewalk makes its move to dehydrate back to cement powder. Crows in Lantana glide their skeletons at the sun. Peeling dashed board covers under its boot. Even the basement is hot with the sun. Lantana glows easily towards it, as if the sun were a cool, moss-edged pool. Crows glare back at the glare to measure the cat's eye against other marbles, buttons, and round, shiny things. Crow collects, sorts, and radiates it onto the lawn, like a grandma grandparent's knitting pattern. You don't have to look at it. Your arms dangle like hot seat belts. Your skin wrinkles more rapidly. Skeins on the lawn connecting one corner of skin to the other. Cool sheets over hot skin cover old furniture. The sidewalk is cracked where a tree used to stand. You wouldn't know if you hadn't seen it. Thank you. Thank you, Reg. Um, Chloe, are you able to unmute Vib Vibiana? Oh, Viviana, it is showing that you have no audio feed. I can see that you have a video, but it does not show an audio option. So unless you want to try calling in with, with the phone number that I emailed you earlier, that might work better. We can see now that there's a video going, but we there's no audio um, even option showing up. There's no way for me to mute you or unmute you because there's no audio showing up at all. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Um, next is Coco, who will be reading Harvest Season. Greetings out there in COVID land. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Greetings. This is Harvest Season. They know not of this land, how it came to be and what makes it grand. To reap and to sow, to plow and to mow, the grain grown through grit and through pain. How laborers died in the heat and in the rain. The harvest has come, praise shouts throughout the land. But do you know the bountiful harvest grown by each woman and man? My children just learning to talk. No lot time for loose lips that now begin to talk. No time to play. These seeds must be sown by the end of the day. Tell me again, to whom you do you give thanks? Do you come to know their bellowing angst? Which crop fill your bowl to the brim? While others grow hungry, their outlook so grim. Feast and be merry, no need to be wary, for the harvest season has come. Thank, Thank you, Angel Teresa. Thank you, Coco. Next is Liz is Lizbeth Coinman here? Okay, next is Pat Cross, and Pat will be reading My Mother's Father. Lizbeth is here. Yes, I'm here. Oh, I'm okay. Um and then let's go back to Lizbeth first. Lizbeth Coyman will be reading Immigration Status Grieving. Okay. I don't know if I can read that last. <laughs> Immigration Status Grieving. Immigration, complex red tape entanglement, Humanity lost in the dossier, documents of birth, field applications and fees, pero sin papeles para el luto. Without the therapy of a funeral, no six feet deep burials, dressed in black next to a casket, mourning the painful fact of forever gone, 
grieving death in the distance. The dead still live in the soul, in the mind, never tangible, never finite, no visas for grieving. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Lizbeth. Pat Cross will be reading My Mother's Father. Thank you so much, My Mother's Father. My grandfather's heart pumped peppermint schnapps through icy veins. My grandfather's lungs bestowed a home to too many camels. My grandfather's fingers, shortened years before, caressed only the back of his dog. My grandfather's voice machine gunned in volume and speed. My grandfather's sperm fathered 14 children, only three grown. My grandfather's brain stewed a soup of imagined wrongs. My grandfather scared me. One sister thought he was funny. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Bill Cushing, who will read Dry Docks and Parades. Greetings, thanks a lot. This is Dry Docks and Parades. The warm breezes of great heights ran through fine, light hair as I straddled my father's neck, gripping tight to his collar as veterans marched proudly by, Ike's years then. Days of wonderful dizziness looking at that parade of men below me, a fearful pleasure, like now, climbing king posts and stanchions of 80,000 ton tankers built with half inch steel and star plate from the keel up using cables, rivets, bolts, torches, and welds. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bill. Next is Tongva poet Megan Darame, and she will be reading The Abalone Are Dying. Thank you. And this is The Abalone Are Dying. Excesses, excessive, extractive, taking, taking more, taking too much, taking for sport, for sale, for food, for expensive food, the most expensive seafood in the world. Harvesting, over harvesting, nets overflow, exploiting, over exploiting, endangered. Warming ocean exhausts, expanses of kelp to stump, and abalone are starving. Endangered, elusive, illusory, existing only in chest or muscle scar scraped clean with the sweep of the wrist. Exhibiting glistering halos, fog bows, rainbows, scalloping outwards in concentric circles and spiraling back to the apex. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Polly Dutton and she will be reading Charita Comfort. When you find you're engaged to a married man, as you munch, wail, drive through the rain, I will be your passenger. When your daughter marries, moves to another country, and you sleep in her bed, wear her money gown, I will dream of her with you. When you hold her firstborn, Afraid to care too much before a soon departure, I will remind you that love never arrives without a bag of heartache. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. Next is Richard Dutton, who will be reading My Car is Like a Woman. My car is like a woman. You need the right key to turn her on or off. The engine warms up and purrs. You have to know what buttons to make her blink or hop. 
with buttons cool her off or warm her up. Taking a convertible top off might not be automatic. You might have to work on it by hand. Accelerator. If you push too hard, you could spin your wheels. For, for me, I slowly advance from gear to gear. It won't work if you jump into fifth gear when standing still. Get her going, too. You can go further if you don't go too fast. Otherwise, you will have an accident of some sort and you don't drive so long. If you go too long, she runs out of gas just as I do. So get off the freeway where it says rest stop. <laughs> also, you both could fuel up. If you take good care of her, she lasts longer. If you give her TLC, she works better and looks better. Come to think of it, uh, my wife has a car too, a, a newer model. <laughs> uh, I wonder how she would word it. Thank you. Next is Alicia Elcourt, and she will be reading All the Goodness of the World. I was walking down the street, and a woman walking her tiny, tiny dog turned to say, hello, dear. And it wasn't the words, but her smile. I fell into a hole the size of sweetness. And as I fell, someone handed me a cup of compassion, though it tasted like lemon and honey, and someone handed me joy, though it looked like a pink wool hat. And when at last I stopped falling, I was back on the street, though it felt as if my feet were standing on white sands and clear water. And oh, the kindness of her eyes. We didn't hug because we were strangers, but I wanted to. Her eyes said, it's okay, dear. Yes, yes, her eyes said, there is goodness in all the days of your life, as if all the gray-haired grandmothers of the world stood around chanting, hello, dear. Hello, dear, and her eyes, so brown though they looked like daisies. Life handed me grief, though it felt like mud, and life handed me sadness, though it felt like thirst. But in two shakes of a second, here on the street with wild orchids blooming, my heart opened and orange-breasted sparrows followed me home, all because a woman with a tiny, tiny dog has in her secret pockets secret treats for every living person. So not a secret after all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to now hand it off to Hazel to introduce the second half of our poets. Hi, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> I just wanted to say before we go into the next portion of our program, can everyone hear me and see me? Okay, I just want to say that was amazing that I have, as one of the editors, I've read every single piece in the anthology. And hopefully um, you all have your, your copy. And if not, we'll talk about how to get it. Um, but for me, there's nothing better than hearing the voice of the, of the poet. It's just such an amazing gift. So. Thank you to all of you. Yes, I just want to chime in really quickly. And, um, and I completely agree that first set of readers and hearing you and seeing you, even though we're not in person, is, was just amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now, we're going to, before we go into the passing of the laurels uh, ceremony, and, and that's scheduled to take about 12, maybe 15 minutes. But before we do that, I was reading somewhere that Zoom teleconferences can be sometimes stressful because we have so many images that we're looking at and we're listening and we're trying to understand the technology. Um, and this is all new to us. So before we go there, I would like for everyone just to take a deep breath. Just breathe in and breathe out. Let's do that three times. Breathe in. Let it out. 
Breathe in and let it out. Now we're gonna take a pause for about, I have a three minute break, but I think if we just take a minute pause so that if anyone has to use the restroom, you wanna grab some water or a cookie, after all, this is poetry and cookies, that you may do so before we go into the next part of the program. So um, we're just gonna take a minute and then we'll do the passing of the laurels. While we're on a break, um, real quick, Viviana, if it's if it's not gonna if if we can't figure out the sound issue, maybe an option is that you could submit a video or an audio recording of your reading that could be shared after the event. I'm just if we can't figure it out in the second half, I want to ensure you still have a chance to be heard if you'd like to be. So if you'd like, maybe you could coordinate with Hazel and Teresa to submit a, a recording if you can hear me. And we can then post that on the playlist on YouTube, if that is something you would prefer. Because I'm still, I saw you said you tried calling in again, and I can't seem to see an audio option still for you. And so that might be an option. Sorry, back to the break.
Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. Is Chloe, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, in this next portion of our program, we have the very exciting um, passing of the laurels ceremony, which Teresa and I will be conducting. Um, and we, it's such an honor to pass the laurels to our next Poets Laureate, uh, Khadija Anderson and Jessica Abugadis. Before we start, can everyone hear me? I, I don't see me, but hopefully you can all hear me. Before we yes. start the ceremony, um, Rick Wilson will give us a brief musical interlude on his flute. Uh, I'm be improvising on a Native American flute of a very ancient type. Uh, it, was, it was excavated in Utah. Uh, it's, the original is about 1,200 years old. This, of course, is a modern replica. And I'll improvise. I don't know what they played 1,200 years ago. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Rick. That was beautiful. It just really calms my spirit. Thank you. And thank you, Cathabella, for honoring us and for allowing him to play. Um, for the passing of the laurels, we will have both, first of all, Teresa and I have a few remarks. Then we'll have the passing of the laurels. And then we'll have remarks from uh, Khadija and Jessica. So, Teresa, would you like to start? Um, sure. Okay, so congratulations, Khadija Anderson and Jessica Abugatas on your poet laureateship for 2020 to 2022. I wish you a wonderful journey in these next two years. I would like to offer you a poem. Photosynthesis. How can I convince you that you do have chlorophyll, that you can take the sun's energy and turn it into sugar, produce something sweet inside of you, take the waste people breathe out and make it into something that will keep you alive, that will keep those around you alive, create oxygen, why do you say that this metaphor doesn't work, that you don't have the powers of a plant, that nature didn't intend you that way? Look how you twist and turn towards the light. May the light within you, within your heart and soul, continue to be your guide and carry yourselves and the community through these beautiful and challenging times. Congratulations, Khadija and Jessica. And 
I can't give you this. I have some pink spray paint on it by accident. <laughs> but I'm going to <laughs> pass the laurels to you virtu virtually. <laughs> I just want to say woohoo. Um, I'm going to start off with um, Once Upon a Time. When Toni Morrison gave her 1993 lecture in literature and acceptance speech in Stockholm for the award for the Nobel Prize in literature, she began with those words. And maybe she started there because those are the words that I think we all fell in love with when we first started to read or hear our stories. Can you hear me? Um, she went on to tell the story, Toni Morrison went on to tell the story of this old blind woman. The woman was blind and wise, and of course she lived deep in a forest. And in the story, the version that Toni Morrison told, the woman was black, she was the daughter of slaves, but there are many other versions, and it could be Native American or Latino or um, from the Philippines or wherever but it's the same story. And one day, some children came to visit her in her little dwelling in the forest. And they were, they were intent on proving that she wasn't wise and that she was loose, useless. So standing before her, this old woman, this old blind woman, the children hold out, one of the children hold out her hands and she says to the old woman, I'm holding in my hand a bird. Is the bird, is it dead or alive? Now, the woman stops and thinks for what seems like an eternity. She's just silent. And then the, the children, they're sure that they've proven their point. They start to giggle. And then finally, the old woman speaks and she says, I don't know whether the bird you are holding is dead or alive, but what I do know is that it's in your hands. It's in your hands. Now, Morrison goes on to explain that for her, the metaphor, the, the, the metaphor for the bird is language. The metaphor for the old woman is a writer. And, and she goes on to explain that language is a living thing. It's an organism that embodies all of our thoughts, our ideas, our actions, our deeds. And it, it, it inspires us to rise to great heights or to fall to great depths. And we all know what, what happens when language dies. As, as George Orwell points out, um, it becomes double speak. And he describes that as a language that disguises, obscures, and distorts the meanings of words, which is kind of where we are today. So for me to be a poet laureate is one of the greatest honors that a community can bestow upon its poet. And for the new, for Khadija and Jessica, as you move forward, children will come to you and they're going to bring you their first writings of poetry and they're going to ask you for your feedback. You will smile, hopefully, and tell them that if it comes from their heart, that it is a poem. You will teach them the art and the craft. You will read your poetry to audiences and they will listen very deeply. You'll edit poems for the next anthology and you'll help to shape the world of literature and poetry. So whether the bird is alive or dead is in our hands. It's in your hands. So with that, Congratulations, and I pass the laurels virtually. Congratulations. We're going to be there to support you all the way. Thank you. So now,
with that being said, um, we'll ask you, we'll start with um, Khadija, if you have a few words you'd like to say. There, there I am. Hi everyone. What a great gathering. Thank you so much. And thank you for the lovely words, Hazel and Teresa. And I'm really, really excited at, um, for my appointment along with Jessica. We had like a two hour FaceTime, our first meeting, and we got along amazingly. So we're gonna bring fire to Altadena Poet Laureate. <laughs> and I, I can't see Jessica on the screen, but I know she's shaking her head in agreement. Um, so yeah, I just wanna thank everyone. And we have a lot um, of things planned already. I just wanna give a little, um, two things, three things. One is we have a Facebook page. It's Altadena Poet Laureate, simple. We have an Instagram page, same thing, Altadena Poet Laureate, very easy to find. <laughs> yeah, I see Coco excited. And also our first reading, we're gonna be doing a reading and a workshop alternating months going on in, in the calendar. And our first reading is coming up on Sunday, May 17th at 2 p.m. Uh, it's going to be online and we don't have the whole thing planned but what i can tell you is we will have other poet laureates from the west coast joining us to read so the two people confirmed so far is uh, lake county california which is up sort of inland from san francisco north a little bit uh, georgina guardardo is going to read with us and also raul sanchez from redmond washington he's the poet laureate up there so I've got those two confirmed and we may have one or two others. So look for that. We'll have that on Instagram and Facebook and, and some sort of other way to get, reach all of you if you don't have those things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jessica. Hello. Um, hi, my loves. Thank you, Teresa and Hazel. That was so beautiful to hear from both of you. Um, I have butterflies in my stomach, so I'm going to keep it brief, but I'm so grateful to be part of this community and I'm looking forward to editing the next uh, literary review alongside you all. I know how much you all love poetry and I'm just stoked on getting to share that with you and hopefully in person uh, when we're out of this quarantine. Um, do join us for the event that Khadija just mentioned so that we can continue to have a um, little community through all this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Jessica and Khadija. And we're just so excited and congratulations again. So we'll be seeing you soon and we'll meet before, you know, this is when this is all over said and done, we'll meet to kind of pass off the information that um, Teresa and I have accumulated. Okay, now we're ready for the next part of our program, which is a continuation of the, the poets and, and their um, readings. So to begin, we have the first one uh, that I have on my part of the list is Martina Glegos. Martina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. See, how do I do the big screen? Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, so my poem is called Mother's Womb. Life ends when death begins in the journey of the sacred womb of Mother Earth. Mother Earth begins the cleansing of the body. He just welcomed back to his loving arms. Now the child begins a new life, cradled with love and integrity before sharing it with the world. The new child wonders whether it's worth living such nurturing nest. No worries, no affection. Oops, no worries, no danger. Only affection, only love and affection. Mother, oh yeah. Mother Earth humbly offers. Life and death are part of life, and death eventually turns to life. So we live it with Mother Earth. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Master. 
Thank you, Martina. Next, we have Catherine Gewertz. Hi, thank you. I'm reading, there are things you don't have to inherit. There are things you don't have to inherit. Your mother's teacups, for instance. It's okay not to love them, to drop them off at the local thrift store. When you pack up her house, it's okay to save the wine-colored sweater she cuddled you in, the mixer that made chocolate cakes on rainy afternoons. It's okay to throw out the dusty menorah and the way she stared hatefully at her image in the mirror, that laser that began with her cold father and beamed straight into her young body, out her eyes, and into you. When packing up her house, it's okay to drape her old sheets over the long mirrors, pull her heavy front door closed behind you, and buy new mirrors for your own home, to look into them each morning as the coffee pot gurgles, and say to yourself, hello there, hello. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine, beautiful. Next, we have Charles Harmon, who will be reading Mushroom Hunters. Good afternoon. I visited Hiroshima, where a mushroom cloud turned an entire city into a graveyard. Prayed for peace. Called up down in New Orleans under a bad moon when Hurricane Katrina submerged Crescent City beneath floodwaters and reborn mushrooms came marching in. Passed out meals and medicine for the Red Cross, ripped mold encrusted carpet and drywall for FEMA, while the Big Easy, rising again, dried out slowly. Toured Chernobyl where radioactive mushrooms still glow in darkness. Considered my blessed, innocent bystander students killed in drive-bys by gangbangers who mocked them as mushrooms because they popped up on sidewalks. Remember decomposing corpses in Vietnam jungles cloaked in fungus fur. Monsoon mushrooms blossoming from decaying skin pondered how a tiny rifle bullet mushroom to blow out a president's skull. So I declared war against mushrooms, fought the virulent fungi, my private campaign against champignon. Growing on the field of, fields of Mars, ate them raw in salads, devoured them cooked in soups, polished them off on pizza, ingested them in spaghetti sauces, consumed them in exotic casseroles, feasted on them gathered wild in forests, forgot my edible fungus guide, popped one in my mouth to sample the taste, fatal mistake, destroying angel, toxic toadstool, died alone miles from the nearest road, hallucinogenic visions of reincarnation buzzing my brain. When we hunt mushrooms, mushrooms we become, then the mushrooms eat me. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. That was amazing. Next we have Randall Horton and he will read The Visit. Thank you, Hazel and Teresa and everyone else who had anything to do with this today. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm honored to be able to read today the visit. Locked inside, trapped outside, wondering, are you okay? This mystery has me questioning, what's the point? She's seated at the table, her fingers, not her thumb, in her mouth. No plate, spoon, fork, or knife. Only crumbs, an empty black coffee cup. She holds to her mouth, licking the rim. 
She's in a triad world, memory drought, embellished gibbering, childlike laughter, fixed sensations of touch and feel. Flashing reality, she rubs the floor, investigates the wall from her chair. She's shifting into new levels of reality. Last week, told her my name. She repeated my name. She said, my son, overjoyed. On cloud nine, she remembered. And next time will be next time to visit. Thank you. Mm. Wow. Thank you for that, Randall. Um, Lois P. Jones to a friend at Rilke's grave in Rayon. Rayon, that's in Switzerland. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Teresa, very, very much. Good luck to the new laureates. Um, to a friend at Rilke's grave in Rayon, Alles ist eins, um, everything is one. The black faced sheep are bleeding. Their bells, a soft song, a clinking of spoons in tin cups, a call to presence when the world draws them into its map of the living. The pine trees know how the dark hum of a new season enters the lungs like a promise. And if it is a promise, how can it be sustained? I stand in bare feet near my rucksack and the gray slate path to his grave. The mountains offer distance, the snow a memory of a life I barely recall, just the blue repeating of the Alps, and from somewhere a chant, three words that fall from the air as my shadow touches his grave. And as I whisper them over and over, I cannot say he isn't present or that the dead don't move toward what calls them. Only how the valley stretches its worn jacket on the grass and begs me to stay. How my heart is a spinnaker in the wind, catching the breath of it. I linger as long as I can until the shadow of his cross escapes into darkness. I make my way through the mosaic of gravestones and the plots of bright flowers planted near each grave, cross the corner where the aspen trembles, and then I see you just as you are, awoken from the place of dreams, and I cannot tell where the soft green slope of the hill ends and your hip begins. I want to say, don't forget her. She's still on the hill, her body shaded from October sun her face in profile, arms resting on knees as she looks into the deepening veil. Aren't parts of us buried in the lands we meet? Our souls broken into bones, sure as flint. There are foxes like wood smoke in the body. They move quietly in the forest. They know one of their own. They will find you they will dig you up. Thank you. I'm unmuted. <laughs> I'm getting used to the mute and unmute. Thank you, Lois. Next, we have Deborah Kologi, and she will read her hospital haiku. Hi. This is Deborah P. Kologi, and um, the word hospital has a totally different meaning than it did when I wrote this sequence of haiku. Um, I was thinking more in terms of cancer doctors and nurses, and now we have doctors and nurses everywhere fighting for us. So I just want to dedicate it to all the doctors and nurses. Hospital haiku. Sunlight over the city. Cancer day hospital. Trickle of water in a hospital fountain. Fluid infusion. The number of petals on a daisy 
another MRI. Embarrassing moment. The nurse acts as if he's seen it before. Left alone, a nurse covers me with a warmed blanket. Curtains between infusion chairs, how my world has shrunk. Whistleblower, pet scan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah. Next, there's Tom Lakus with Dancing, I'm sorry, Dell Avenue. Thank you, and thanks to Teresa and Hazel. Uh, Dell Avenue, by the way, is a street in Venice. Dell is an avenue, its bridges arcing over small fish too quick in the water to name. Along the footpaths, out of town guests walk behind their hosts. On either side, doors open into living rooms and kitchens where realtors host open houses. This is how we learn what living here is like. Mallards float southwest on Howland Canal and northeast on Carroll, diving for small crustaceans, surfacing, diving again. Before we tour the empty houses, we watch them a while. Afterwards, we watch again. If we lived here, we'd watch the paddling and the diving day after day. We fly home wishing we were born into that other life, that rarer life, that life as iridescent as the mallard's green cheek. Eyes wide, the mallard does not count our shadows, but counts one dark fish. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Janice Lukestein or Luke Stein, uh, Dancing Daffodils. I don't think she's on. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Penelope, Penelope Moffat, Water Lilies. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Oh, okay, great, thanks. Okay. Water lilies. In South Sudan, a woman wades through water muddied by the movement of her feet, collecting water lilies to eat. There's the blonde correspondent standing nearby, microphone in hand, khakis darkened by the swamp. are held up so we, the audience at home, half napping in our chairs, too full from what we ate in a nearby camp. We think we are immune. We think the suffering flickering in our homes on nightly news belongs to others. Each night driving home beneath an overpass, I see someone under blankets. A thin hand lifts and falls. But lived inside, like me. Thank you. Thank you, Penelope. Janet Nepal. I don't know if she's with us. I don't see her on the list of participants. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Uh, Bill Ratner with Milk and Hyacinth. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Teresa. And thanks, Elsie in the library for all of you for making this fabulous book. Milk and Hyacinth. My first class was taught by a man, a little clingy in cottons and sneakers, the salt scent of the asanas quiet. Today, my teacher's voice is jeweled and winnowed, a palimpsest. She strides like flying, 
with the grace of an Echo Park dove, aiming, calling softly, slowing hearts. Sure weather, her voice in petals, rhythm, history. With her, gravity works well. To mirror, to keep right from left, she describes milk and hyacinth, tadasana, trikonasana. She aids our breath, our speed, our strength. She leaves none behind. With her this day, this class, these moments, I witness the shifting down of time, the moving of an age, the perfection of us, a practice of body magic since before she could sit. She is she and not of me. She in yoga grace is my daughter, Miranda, my child my master. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Bill. Next we have Susan Rogers, longing for October. I know she wasn't here earlier. Has she joined us? Yeah, I've been here. I think my, oh. it was just not, it was unmuted, muted. Oh, okay. Thank you, Teresa, and thank you, Hazel, for the beautiful anthology and this reading. Um, this poem is written in Japan for the trees that turn these incredible colors of red and orange uh, due to something called anthocyanin, which sh sort of uh, triggers the sugar in the tree to make this color. Longing for October. I looked for you among leaves so full of color, they burst like cherry flames singing of sap. I looked for you in the blood of autumn, trees warmed by sunfire, spinning in the pulse of maple and beech, anthocyanin, sugaring green veins as spring sugars the sky with sakura. I looked for you in the chill of autumn, mountains filling the sweep of space with strokes of brilliance, knowing it's both fire and frost that paints the tree knowing every love turns to deeper shades of longing as it rises into fullness. You are wind and water moving across the face of leaves. You are the invisible made visible, sap rising until it explodes in a symphony of light everywhere I look in the canopy. Thank you, that was lovely. Thank you, Susan. Um, next, we have uh, Carla Samoth, who will be reading Secondary Inspections, uh, a Sestina. Thank you so much, Teresa and Hazel, and for this, for all you've done over the last years, and for all you do, and for this beautiful book, this anthology, this reading. Thank you for everyone involved with making this reading happen. Secondary Inspections, a nose, a foreign look, a memory, they just want to know if you're Jewish, your mom says, of questions about what country you came from. You know that you'll never pass for who you are. Everyone foreign claims your face. City of Angel swelters, everyone here from somewhere else, still they ask, where were you born? And how do you say hello? You answer fearing hatred. Fear you came by naturally after strip search and secondary inspections, not beautiful. Go to New York, you'll be sought out, the statuesque, unapologetically beautiful black Colombian woman says. Not here, you're Tucan Sam, you're a Jew. Angelinos look for an airbrushed effect. Images of themselves, she says. Hatred for your ancestral look. You have only a slight accent, where are you from? Later old Armenian men shout out greetings from their balconies, ask questions you can't understand. You only know your strong nose on face, too ugly for years for a girl, and you're hairy. White Angelinos seek their own face, lips full, not too ethnic and less ambiguous, not too angular, no rough edges, beautiful. Custom guards interrogate, hands grab your body. In Greece, Danish boys ask you for towels, assume you are from Paros. Jewish journalist writes story, gets tweets, his beheaded caricature rises from desire to make America white again. Mm -hmm. You are zoo animals watched by hatred. You fear reaction to your ancestral aura. You find hidden outposts of hatred. City of angels where everyone came from somewhere else, yet your face looks foreign. Daily you hear, no, where are you really from? 
No use saying you're a second generation born in America, land of the beautiful. Your mom's answer to that was always, they only want to know if you're Jewish. You go with your son on a field trip. What tribe are you, Cherokee guide asks. Of course, we both came across the Bering Straits, he says, and doesn't ask, where are you really from when you answer? Shows no hatred. From Russia, Hungary, Palestine, Turkey, you say and tell them you're Jewish. Watch what hashtag you use lest it shows up as a cross burned on your Facebook page. Maybe it's true what the Colombiana says. Go to New York. You'd be beautiful there. Here your black son looks like someone they might shoot or run from. You look like someone might be rounded up, asks where from. A man lingering outside 7-Eleven looks at you both and asks, Egyptian? Your son mimes the walk like Egyptian dance, your beautiful son. Later he says, I guess there's more racism than I thought. Hatred spewing out of a parking attendant's mouth spits as he yells at a face that looked a lot like my son. KKK leader posts, of course they're not white, Jews. You're looked upon with suspicion, hatred, wondering where you're from. Will they look at our faces, hear an unspoken word and ask? You wonder, in New York, will I be beautiful? Will we be safe? Jew and Afro Jew. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Hazel. Okay, I'm sorry. I kind of got bounced out. I clicked the wrong thing. So next we will have Seba Sawar reading rotation. Thank you, Teresa and Hazel for this and everybody else. It's been a beautiful experience. Um, rotation. This is a poem that I dedicate to my mother who is 81 years old. It's hard to stop her. Last year in 2019, she visited nine countries. This year she had the same intention until she was stopped. So she is right now quarantined in Karachi, Pakistan, my home country. Rotation. She heats oil, rolls, puri, drops flat flour into bubbling oil. You conquer enforce rules, ban travel. In another pan, she pops coriander seeds, tosses sliced potatoes. You build walls, deport passengers, obstruct asylum seekers. She serves flaky puri with crisp potatoes. We devour together. You demand documents, collect fingerprints, require face identification. Our choice, eat, speak, wear, practice as we please, where we wish. You cannot hinder climbs, prevent tide, stop earth rotation. Like waves we cross, we fly, we roar, we stay or leave, our movement permanent. Thank you. Thank you, Saba. Next, we have Pamela Shia reading Sequoia Cathedral Tree. The den held secure by unseen forces. I exit with deep gratitude. Ahead of me lie untrodden courses. Awareness is startled awake. Nearby lies a thick carpet of green. In treetop, in treetops grow fresh emerald fronds, lush as a leprechaun's dream. I push to the edge on a ledge. Hanging rock makes me feel faint. Moro rock glistens in the distance. I hear singing of forest saints. I descend and sit on a log. A limb crashes, birds are disturbed. Above night's first star is twinkling. Profound stillness. Thank you. Thank you, that was beautiful. Um, and now we have Alicia Vidyar Espert. I, I apologize if I mispronounce your, this, your name. No, good, no, good. And thank you very much to you and to Teresa and to everyone else. You are wonderful. So this poem is called Aurora. 
as a whisper of twilight reaches my window, its open lip a promise of sweet pictures. I listen to the diffuse illumination conversing with the ether. Under Roman influence, Dawn, already consecrated as a figure of speech, didn't have a choice but to be renamed Aurora and stuck. I remember my first encounter with Homer's image, a blind man with a cane wandering from Asia Minor all the way to Athens. How it lodged in my mind and cozy company with the three wise men and baby Jesus. Reading the Iliad, my father, pointing a path in the atlas, coaxed me to picture the bard reciting long examiners to worthy men of state in the Greek citizenry. Thanks to that obsession, Eos, the rosy finger one, remained plastered inside the walls of my child's brain. Coming from a family of three siblings, I imagined her own family dynamics, how she got along with Helios chatting as he opened the gates of heaven every morning. But with Celine, it was complicated. As a kid, I noticed Cloud's chameleonic transformation to mauve rose spaces and then the, under the novel effect of light at the other extreme of the Mediterranean and the Playa de la Malvarrosa, the one frequently painted by Sorolla. We children played with sand, light, breeze, the lightness of being surrounded by centuries old catastrophes still occurring at our sea. Perhaps Homer never existed, but Down does. And though Rome may have illegally appropriated Eos' life, turning her deeds and possessions to Aurora, including her chariot. I salute the neo goddess. And when I get up early, I always search the heavens for signs of the rosy finger wand about to perform in the sky's stage for eternal ever new show. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa. Alicia. Um, Hazel, if I may, um, I'd like to, we do have a guest here who he is experiencing homelessness. He's actually on the back cover of our book and his poem is in a series of photos um, of him holding cardboard up. I actually met him in Highland Park when I was volunteering at the Shower of Hope and um, one of my friends um, John U. Kirsa is in touch with him and he happened to be able to join us today so I really would love um, for him, his name is Chris Wallace, to be able to share his poem with us because I know this is, this is a one in a lifetime opportunity and part of our responsibility and what um, Hazel and I did as poet laureates um, where we outreached we outreached to the community to make sure that voices that are usually not heard, that are invisible, have a platform. And especially now, um, Chris is our neighbor who lives on the streets. And um, Chris, are you there? Let me see. Um, he was here, so I'm gonna make sure if he is still here. Chris, are you here? Chris Wallace? I see you. I'm here. Okay, would you like to share your poem, Welcome to the Occupation, with us, please? Um, can you hear me? Um, yes, we can hear you. Uh, I, can I do something else? <laughs> um, Besides that? Sure. Um, is it about um, a minute, approximately a minute? Um, I, I wanted to just play some music. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think that's okay for a minute. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, yes, Teresa. And then afterward, we have Cathabella, Cathabella. and Rick. <laughs> 
They'll be yes. the last ones. We also yes. have Vibiana on the phone who's willing to do a verbal one if you are okay with that. We got her on um, audio. That sounds good. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can go uh, whenever. You yeah, you can go right now, in. Chris, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, would you like to go right now? All right. Um, can, uh, can you all see me? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, you can see me, right? I'm on. Okay. Uh, well, this is just um, uh, a, a piece of music. Um, uh, there's no words in this one. And uh, it's just uh, a melody. And uh, I thought it would just be like a sort of like pause between the words. Uh, so here we go. And it's called uh, Bells. It's wonderful to meet you virtually. Uh, it was great to it's great to meet you. Uh, maybe I could say a little something, just real quick. Um, sure. I I just want to give thanks uh, for uh, for the humans and the, for the great facilitator for facilitating this event for us all to share in these weird and strange times. Yeah. And um and and just uh i wanted to you know uh uh invite people to check out uh my uh work and, and my music um uh, i have a youtube 
channel. Um, I'm Sergeant Lepper. And, uh, and then I, last night I did a, uh, a uh, live stream right here from the train station in Highland Park. And, um, and I'll be doing more of those on Facebook uh, as Sergeant Lepper. And, his, and I put a thing in the comments if anybody wants to read it, it has all this information. So, and, uh, and I want to especially thank John. He's the one who contacted me and uh, gave me this opportunity. Okay, thank you. And so, um, um, and if you uh, check out the the uh, the YouTube uh, song, it's called "Homeless Union," and I'm not trying to make a <laughs> big thing. I, I like the I like the confusion. It just gives us more things to talk about. So, like, it's called "Homeless Union," and, and it's the lyrics that are in the book, and and then there's another one called "Under the Sun." And um, hopefully people will enjoy it. And uh, thank you, thank you everybody. Thank and I, I love all the poetry. Uh, it's a great meditation for me today. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we're, we're a little bit over time. Um, I know we were scheduled to end at 2.30. So I appreciate everyone for their patience. Um, I think we're gonna move on to uh, Cathabella, and then we have uh, Viviana, I believe. So thank you, Chris. Yes. Hi, this is Rick. I'm going to accompany Cathabella with the Native American flute, a modern, modern one. It, you can't. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has uh, the far end is is carved into a bird head, a mallard. Redwood. Driftwood at water's edge on this hidden beach, ancient creatures gather immense in their isolation. Their untouched bodies have grown old, they lie together, making shadows. remains of giants. Their long silence between and about the ocean's roar. One dark with eagle's head and younger than the rest rises up surveying if to find its cry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cathabella and Rick. Um, for our last selection, we have, I believe we have Viviana. Um, who will we be reading Mexican of America? Thanks for patiently waiting. Thank you, Chloe, for showing me how to go through the mechanics. I will read the poem and then I will send a video later. Thank you for your patience to the Altadena Library. And I want to dedicate my poem, Mexican of America, to all the courageous women and men who cross the border. They cross it, they crawl across, they swim, they run, they drag their bodies across, they dig holes in the earth to come across. And in the poem, I use metaphors of the woman giving birth, and also the earth, symbols of the earth giving forth life and I use the metaphor of the volcano. Mestizo, come. America, you call. Amniotic oceans, Pacific join. Break through the virgin hymen. Wearing wall. From the fluent 
of her earthen loins. Tender eyes burn with a new day's fire. Earth shatter your bones, your flesh torn on further faces. Electrified, barbed wire, knife, slash, and puncture the sight of the new dawn. You are spewed out, volcanic bloodied birth, darkest rupture imploded, then screamed out, erected from moist entrails of modern earth. Wells of the heart burst purple, veined brown. Desire from the best of takes new day flight. America! America! With stars of shattered light. Thank you, Altadena Library Review, Literary Review, and Teresa and Hazel, Jessica, Abugatas, and Kadia Anderson. Congratulations, the new laureate. And Jessica, I'm so proud. We both graduated from the MSA program in creative writing in 2018 at Antioch. It's been great, and it's such an honor to going to be with you again, and thank you. I will send a video in the future. Thank you all for your patience. Thanks, Thanks Liliana. Thank you. Jeremy, that's all we need to nurture, and thank you, Altadine Literary Review, for nurturing us. Thank you. You are welcome. I don't know who that was, but um, I hope I'm not muted. Um, I just want to say thank you again. Um, that concludes the formal reading part of our program. We will have a few closing remarks um, and then um, we'll end, but it's not the end. It's only the beginning. Uh, before we go to the closing remarks, which will be, um, Teresa's going to say a few words and then Nikki and Claire Nikki Winslow and Clara Newman will close the program out. Before we do that, I just wanted to, since this is my last opportunity to get this in, I want to say thank you again to everyone, to the Altadena Library staff, to Chloe for amazing work in getting, doing the technical support part of this program and setting up the Zoom uh, meeting. For Nikki Winslow, for all of your library support, for the resources that you gave us, provided throughout the couple, last two years. To Claire Newman and the Friends of the Aldadina Library, without your moral support and financial support, we could not have done any of this. Um, to the Altadena Library Editorial Committee, who worked so hard to select all of the amazing poems that are in the Altadena Literary Review. Uh, and they are very quickly Carla Samith, Polly Dutton, Kathy Sandstrom, Mary Fitzpatrick, Khadija Anderson, Gerda Govine, Tony Laudermick, um, me, and Teresa. Um, and I also want to give a shout out and thank you for the support for Thelma, our past poet, Poets Laureate, Thelma, Reina, Aline Lipkin, Polly Dutton for your support. Woo! <laughs> and I think that's it. But thank all of you, last and certainly not least, for your wonderful words, for your poetry. And I can't wait for the next literary review and for Khadija and Jessica um, to come up for their um, activities and anthologies. God bless you all. Teresa? Yes, thank you to everyone for being here. And it was so beautiful and amazing to listen to everyone. Thank you to the editorial board. We couldn't have done this without you and everyone that um, Hazel mentioned on the editorial board. Thank you. And 
thank you to the library. Thank you to the friends of the library who can have done this without you. Your support has been amazing. Thank you, Chloe, for uploading all the YouTube videos. And if you get a chance, check them out. Um, Chris Wallace also has a video on there and he's playing his guitar and singing the song. And everyone's video um, on YouTube on the Altizian Library's YouTube channel is beautiful. Um, if you would like to order the book, I just posted the link. And also if you ordered the book for pickup, we will be sending out an email soon message to you in regards to pickup. Um, we have to wait until the library opens or some kind of arrangement. So you'll be receiving a message soon um, and if you would like to order, if you would like to um, pay for shipping and have your book shipped instead, you can go to that um, same link that I just posted. Um, you can still email us at Altadena Poetry Review at gmail.com. And I will get back to you in regards to your, your books. Thank you to everyone. And... Please take care and stay safe and much love. And all of these links in this video will be posted on the library website following the next couple days. So if you check back at www.altadinalibrary.org slash poetry, that's kind of an easy link to remember. We'll link to where to buy the book, where to view the videos, where to view this video and more on there. So thank you. Okay, um, our Nikki and Claire, do you want to uh, close us out with any final remarks? Sure. Hi, it's Nikki again. Thank you so much, everyone. This was amazing. Um, I'm excited to, to get a, my copy of the book and read through all your poems. And again, thank you for attending and sharing those with us. Um, Library at this point is at least closed until May 18th. I just wanted to share that. But um, in addition to the, all of the poetry resources that Chloe just mentioned, we have a lot of virtual content and programming going on with the library. So please visit us at altadinalibrary.org slash programs to check out all of the things that our staff are offering. Um, and I did want to plug our Board of Trustees meeting is taking place virtually on Monday night. So if you're interested in attending, um, you can do so through the same Zoom platform. So again, thank you so much to everyone. I really enjoyed this program and Hazel, Teresa, you guys have been a dream to work with. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Claire? I, that, that was amazing. That was so good. Um, so I just, was so impressed. I, I already have the ebook copy. I'm actually watching this from the UK where I am for the duration of the lockdown. So it's almost 11 p.m. right now and I've been enjoying this for, from 5,000 miles away um, and I already have the poems but it was just amazing to see them read. So thank you for sharing your funny, thoughtful, beautiful, heartbreaking words and also music. And on behalf of the friends, we're so happy we could be a small part of helping this go ahead um, in this format, uh, after all. And I hope some of you can join us on June the 1st for our friends annual meeting. We have two speakers, also Tim DeRoche and retired State Senator Gloria Romero, who will be talking about issues in education today. And that includes how most American kids are kept out of the best public schools by school districting policies, reminiscent of, of the redlining era and also how the current situation has affected the most vulnerable schools. And um, as I said before, please look out for the uh, virtual second edition of the Friends Book Pitch Party. We held one last November, we're going to hold another one this summer. And I think having seen how wonderfully today has gone, um, I have very high hopes for that being another really fun event. Um, so I feel like I, I, I'm able to wrap up on behalf of everyone. Um, so uh, let me end by saying a huge thank you again, as everyone has said, to Hazel and Teresa and to Nikki, Chloe and the rest of the library team for all your hard work and for making today's event possible and bringing out the Altadena Literary Review and just, just everything that you guys have all done. It's just been incredible. Um, and Khadija and Jessica, I look forward to working with you in future as does everyone I know. And finally, again, 
thank you, thank you to all of the wonderful poets and, and other performers who performed today. It was amazing. Thank you. And I'm looking at the comments right now. One last um, thing. Um, Tina Calderon um, just made a comment. She's, she's Tongva and um, Tongva elder. And she mentioned Hahamanga, which is the Tongva word for the area of Altadena. Um, so that means flowing river and fruitful valley in the original language of the indigenous people of the land. And she wrote it right there. So we all know that we are in Hahamanga area. Thank you, Tina. And thank you, everyone, again. Bye. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a wonderful time. And just be safe. God bless. Just be safe. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.